My name's Dominic Woodin. I'm 17 years old, from London, England. Uh, I fight out of the MMA Terror Squad. For now, I'm just an amateur right now, amateur slash semi-pro, as you can say. I've been fighting under the uh, WCMMA banner. That's a uh, UCMMA uh, semi-pro show, and um, I've got the uh, bantamweight and flyweight title from that show. Interest as well. Um, it first came from, I was playing a, a MMA video game, one of the UFC video games, and uh, I was just so hooked onto the game, and um, like, I just loved it, and that's how I became so addicted to the sport. So I thought I could do it, but at the time I was playing football. So obviously I wanted to, to, to take football professionally. But I said, if I don't make it in football, then I'll transfer to MMA. So I thought to myself, I could do MMA because I know I'll, ha I'll have good attributes transferring into uh, MMA. I didn't see myself doing it professionally because obviously I was still playing football while I was training. So it was 50-50. So uh, like I said before, like if I didn't make it professionally to football, then I would transfer to MMA. Because MMA is a very addictive sport. So I made my mind, change. I transferred to MMA and uh, a year after I started training MMA, I thought to myself, yeah, I, I want to do it. I want to do it properly. One of the questions people ask me is why Dominic is special compared to other athletes or mixed martial artists. Um, there's one key ingredient, and it's called belief. Dominic has a very strong belief in himself and in God. Dom actually believes he is chosen by God to take this path. When someone believes in something 100%, they become near enough unstoppable. Um, so Dom's belief in himself and his ability and his talent makes him that bit more special than everyone else. His work rate, he's at every training session, he studies the game, you know, I know when he leaves here, he watches UFC, he studies fighters, and he don't just watch the UFC, he studies, he breaks people down, he looks at why they're good, he can mimic them, you know. Dominic can do a sparring round, he can fight one round like Anderson Silva, then another round like Ryan Faber, and then round like Dominic Cruz. I've never met anyone who can do that, that easy. He also has a very good picture memory, I believe. He can, I can show him a technique or move and he will be able to replicate it straight away. He's very keen to learn, he listens, and he's very humble with it as well. If you watch his fighting style, it's a bit flamboyant, a bit flashy, and some people might think, oh, this is a cocky young kid. That is his style. If you speak to him, he's a very humble kid who believes in himself, and he knows he's gonna go all the way. Plus, he has a team around him that believe that he will go all the way. So if you've got a team, he's self, and he believes in God, that's a very strong force um, entering the cage. Secondly, he has his whole family support him in his career, which is very, very important. So he has a strong structure from team, family, and God. So with all them so that makes him that little bit above a lot of the average people, you know. Some people, you know, they fight, but do they really believe in themselves? You know, it's like you get people go, oh, I'm gonna go UFC. Do you really believe you're gonna go UFC? Dominic believes he's gonna go there, and I believe he will. And I don't believe he will only go UFC, I believe he will be a champion in his weight class. The other thing he has, which I don't think you can, you can train or learn is he has that heart and that passion that, you know, some guys are great fighters, but when it gets a bit hard and they're getting hit and, and beat up in sparring or a fight, you see them start of, to fade. Dominic has that, you know, that inner strength um, and he's tough as well, he's physically tough. You can hit him with a good shot, he will always come back. That's something you can't, you can't learn, that's, in, that's inside of you as a person. And the final thing that he has, which may be inherited from his father or his mother or his family, he's very athletic. Um, I'll give you an example for that. We go running up these hills with our, our physio. The guy is like an athlete. He, you know, he used to do track running and stuff like that. The only person to beat him up this hill is um, an Olympic athlete. Dominic comes over there for the first time and beats him three times up the hill. I asked my physio, I said, why do you think he could do that? And he's like, he's, it's genetics. He's, he has that, 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 that genetics for running and stuff. And if you speak to Dom, he was good at running at school. He was, he's a natural athlete. He was good at football. He's one of the guys, whatever sport he puts his mind to, he'll be good at. But his suits fighting, he has them fast twitch muscles, he has cardio, he has strength. You look at him, you know, when he's, he, he fights at 57 kilos and he looks quite skinny and, you know, the commentators go, oh, this kid looks a bit like wiry and stuff. He's super strong. What you see is not what you get, you know. I'm, I've been fighting in my weight, weight division for over four years. I've had 18 pro fights and 
When I sparred Dominic, he's the best person I've ever fought. Um, and I fought on Cage Warriors, the big shows, Bama, and he's better than all them guys. Um, he will go all the way, I believe, as long as he don't get no injuries and stays on the right path. MMA is a way of life. Um, MMA, MMA, MMA helps you a lot, like not just in the sport, in life as well. Like, um, like just say for example, um, just say for example, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a hot-headed guy. Just say I am. I'm not saying I am. Just say I am. You go into a combat sport, it humbles you, you know. And uh, yeah, the, 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 when you train in it, it really humbles you. And, uh, and 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 that helps you change the way of the way of your life, the way you think, just your your your, your human well-being. A lot of people they 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 they, they see mixed martial arts if they see it as cage fighting. Uh, mixed martial arts is basically a sport mixed with different martial arts, and the two competitors compete in a cage in a cage or ring uh, with their with their with their both different the different styles. I don't think MMA is the most dangerous sport. Well, it could well it could be one of, but I don't think it is the most dangerous sport. I think in combat sports, I think one of the most dangerous sports is boxing. Like in boxing, like they have a chance to 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 get back up and continue to fight while they're concussed. So that's not that, that, so that's what makes it really dangerous. That's why a lot of fight, a lot of boxers they get brain damages and stuff like that. Whereas like in MMA, like. If someone gets knocked out, the referee instantly stops it. If you get if you get somebody, the referee instantly stops it. If if the referee sees that you're not defending yourself well, he'll stop it. Whereas in boxing, they let they let it carry on a little bit more, a little bit more and more, which which is very dangerous. But it is what it is. But obviously, people think MMA is a lot more dangerous because you got you got elbows, you got knees and stuff like that. So where and more blood as well so obviously it looks more dangerous but all in all it's not, it's not as dangerous as boxing in my opinion but most 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 people most uh, people that do MMA would, would would think the same as well but only the outsiders would think different people accept boxing more than MMA because obviously boxing's been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and it's brought up as like a gentleman sport whereas MMA started like in I think it was 1993. Now, yeah, 1993 started off as like uh, Vale Tudo. Uh, vale Tudo means anything goes. That's in 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 Portuguese. Uh, it means anything goes. And like back in those days, before MMA was like proper regulated and stuff, like it used to be crazy with like head stomps and everything, like a real street fight, basically, but in a ring. Um, yeah, like obviously people accept boxing more than MMA because obviously MMA hasn't been around for as long as boxing and um, it's going to take some time for people to start accepting but obviously as MMA is getting bigger and bigger and bigger during the years and now it's even getting bigger um, people will start accepting it and it will start becoming a household name like boxing. Those people that think that it should be banned obviously they don't know too much about it they just like for example they'll see it on TV and they'll just think oh because there's blood and like people punching up each other and uh, on the floor and stuff like that, they're gonna obviously think it's like human cockfighting, whereas they're not they're not going into depth with it and trying to explore like what it actually is. I don't believe it will be banned. The, the sport would go underground. Um, you know, it's in it's in human nature to fight, test their self on, on an even playing field. It's been happening in, from the dawn of time. You know, you look at two young children; they will wrestle, they will fight each other, cubs. Um, puppies, they wrestle and fight. It's, it's in your nature, you know, to find out who's the dominant male and, and stuff like that. It's a natural thing that humans do. So I don't believe it would be banned. Um, it's got rules, it's got regulations. It's all over the world. It's a worldwide sport, you know. Uh, you know, um, UFC, for example, there was a documentary saying they're worth more than Man United as a company. You know, it's, it's a mass market. The fans love it. Um, and it's going more mainstream. The show that I fight on Cage Royce is going to be on Channel 4, so you know, we all can watch that, so I don't believe it's going to get banned. And if it ever did, I think the sport would never end anyway, it'd go underground. In MMA history, there hasn't been a lot of like serious, serious injuries. Even when you fight, 
after your fight, you get like little niggles, little injuries that will, that you'll be able to heal in, in in like a week and get back to training. You do get some nasty injuries where like you can be out for like a year or two or whatever, but it's not as it's not as frequent and as common as uh, other, uh, other sports. For example, football. In a unified rule MMA fight, you can't uh, stomp to the head. Uh, you can't do like a a 12 to 6 elbow like for example just say if um, I'm on top I'm on top of the guy I can't do like a 12 to 6 elbow because it's a direct elbow so that that's not that's not legal whereas before it was and like the main thing the main thing that got taken out of MMA was the head stomps and the football kicks and stuff like that because obviously that's that's uh, that's a really dangerous move to pull to pull off and uh, yeah so yeah like I said, MMA is more regulated now and things you can do and things you can't do. Injuries are part of the sport. He may get injuries, it's how he rehabs, recovers. You know, we've got a good team around us, we have a physio. Um, also, if we pick up an injury, you know, we're not one of them places, oh, you've got to train, you know, take a few days off, rest, see how it goes. If not, go and see a visit, physio, get, get in a second opinion. Um, injuries are a massive part of this sport. They can affect your training, you know, you have time out of training. There's things we can do to help, you know, you eat properly, stretch, warm down, warm up, but they're always there. Um, but you can't, you know, worry about them and let them perfect your training. You've got to get on with it and if they happen, you work your training around your injuries. You know, some guys, you know, they bust their, their hand or their foot and then they like take two months off. No, you work around it. Okay, my right hand's damaged, let's work on my jab, my kicks, and Dominic's that sort of guy. To be honest, I don't really think about or care about injuries too much. It really depends, like, for example, like, the way you fight. For example, someone like Anderson Silva, you won't see him get too much injuries because the way he fights, he's not, he's not a type of fighter to, to slug it out and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's more of a technical, more of, a, of a, an, an elusive fighter. Whereas someone like, um, someone like, for example, let me just say Forrest Griffin, he, was, he would be getting a lot of injuries and stuff like that because the way he fights affects, affects the injuries that he's going to get. Whereas for me, I'm an elusive fighter. I, I'm a technical elusive fighter, so I don't... The way I fight, I won't be getting a lot of injuries and minor injuries. But obviously, I'm prepared for the injuries because obviously in this sport, you're going to get injuries. Minor injuries, big injuries or whatever. But me personally, I don't really focus on injuries. I just, I just, I just go in there, train and fight. When you're in the fight, you don't feel nothing till after. Unless if you, if someone body shots you in your liver, then obviously you're gonna feel that instantly. But when, when you're, when you, when you're in the cage, like you, 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 you don't feel nothing. To be honest, uh, you feel it after, after the fight, because that's when all the adrenaline, that's when you have the adrenaline dump and all the adrenaline's gone. So you feel it all after when you get back into the uh, changing rooms. If, if Dominic's in a fight and everything equal, uh, same weight, which is generally normal, same talent skill, same, same physicalities, uh, both athletic, both strong, both good stand-up, good ground, good wrestling, there's finer margins. This is when it comes down to mental strength, focus, belief. Dominic has the right mindset, which sets him apart from everyone else. At 17 years old, to travel up to Bolton and fight the number two guy in the country on his own show with all the other guys' crowd, and Dominic is cool as ice. Not phased, not buff, not stressed. You know, he stayed in a hotel the night before, away from home at 17 year old, with a crowd on the other guy's side, in an uh, unfamiliar environment, ice cool. I've never seen a fighter so relaxed before a fight, during a fight. He has that, you know, he, he ain't even nervous when he fights, which is a rare thing to have, um, which will, will set him apart from other athletes. You know, you see other guys before they compete, you know, they try and act like they're not nervous, but you can still see it. Dom is not nervous at all, um, which I believe separates him from everyone else. What gets you the win? It's all up here, it's all uh, mental. Yeah, you, you, you got you got to be mentally strong going into the fight. You can you can look you can look physically ripped and physically strong, but 
once you once you go into the cage and the door locks, it's all mental. Like um, it's all it's all mental when you when 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 you're in there because if you're not mentally right in the fight, you're gonna you you already lost the fight. If you're mentally strong in the fight, you already won the fight. And as well as conditioning as well, like for example, you can look physically well prepared, but your conditioning might not be as as good as how your body looks and uh, conditioning affects the way you perform in your fight as well, as well as your, as well as the mental aspects of, of the fight. But for me, mostly it's mental. Uh, you've got to be really mentally strong to get into a fight in the, in, 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 in the cage. Where even in combat sports, really, really and truly, any sport that you want to do professionally, you've got to be mentally strong to, uh, to, 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 to succeed and prevail in. So, Obviously, it's all mental for me. For, for me, 9% mental, 10% physical for me. Everyone that fights, obviously, they, they love to get stoppage and finish fights and stuff like that, but obviously, not always it can go, not always it can go the way you exactly visualise it. That's why in fights you have to adapt and uh, overcome some stuff sometimes. So sometimes you can be in situations that you didn't plan to be in, so that's why you've got to be ready in all areas before a fight so um yeah like like i said um yeah like um you can't always expect to get a finish so uh for example if you so badly want to finish and you're trying to rush the finish and you're trying so badly to get a finish you ain't gonna get it because you're trying too much whereas like most most fighters when they knock a fight when they knock other opponents out it's not by force because the shots that knock out the shots that knock out the opponents are the ones that are unexpected and the ones that they didn't expect it to uh, finish them or KO them or, or, or whatever. So yeah, you can't always you can't always well you can go into a fight mentally saying to yourself, well I'm gonna finish this guy, but obviously you need to know into yourself you can go all the rounds before because if you go in with like that's how I, for example me, when I go into a fight. I don't go into fight with a game plan. I go with whatever comes to me. So I'm like, like before a fight, I'm ready for anything. I'm ready for anything before a fight. I don't, I don't have no game plans because you have a good, you dwell on a game plan, you, 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 you're gonna end up failing. But most like seven times out of ten, you're gonna end up failing because you're dwelling on, to, you're dwelling on to do something, and it's not working. So. Obviously, if it's not working, you're gonna, you're gonna think to yourself, oh crap, it's not working. So then it's gonna make you freeze in a fight. So that's why you gotta be ready for anything. And that's why you gotta stay ready for anything and adapt and overcome any situation in the fight. What does Dominic need to improve on? Everything. If I said, oh, he needs to concentrate on his striking, his grappling, he's always evolving. It's the evolution of, of a martial artist. So Dominic's improving every day. Every chest that he comes, he improves. He improves his tie, he improves his wrestling, he improves his strength and conditioning. He's always improving as an athlete. As a fighter, as a competitor, well, anything you do in life, you've got to step out of your comfort zones. In order to progress and to uh, persevere, you've got, to, you've got to step out of your comfort zone to, uh, to, reach, higher, to reach higher levels, so obviously, I want to go out there, get out of my comfort zone, train uh, with high-level training partners, um, and yeah, high-level training partners, and expand my, uh, my 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 skill set. So that's why you need to uh, you always have to get out of your comfort zone in order to get better. What I see is Dom is someone who improves rapidly, really fast. Like we're talking, within two weeks he's improved massively. From when he started here, like to now, it's like it's a completely different fire. And how good he's going to be in three or four years is a very scary prospect. You know, um, I'm one of his main sparring partners, and I've said to his manager before, if Dominic was pro now and in my weight division, I would avoid him like the plague. The future's really bright for him. Um, he, I think, it, you know, there's different routes he can go. Bam, or he can go go Cage Warriors, um, you know, for me, I think Cage Warriors is the best show in Europe. That'd be a great show for him to develop next. Um, he'd be Cage Warriors champion in two, two to three years, I believe. 
then it'd be UFC. Um, we have a vision, you know, he, he'd be one of the youngest UFC champions. Um, that's the goal. Our goal is not to get to UFC. There's a lot of British fighters, they talk about, I want to get UFC, I want to get to UFC. So if your, your aim is to get to the UFC, what's after that? Our aim is to be the UFC champion. So we aim, we aim for the moon and if we hit the stars, it's, it's good. Where do you see yourself in like two to five years? And what, do you, what are you planning to do to get to where you want? Two to five years. In two to five years, well, in two years, 2016, I see myself being in the UFC. And within the five year limit, I see myself being the UFC champion. That make you then in five years if you will be the champion then? Being if something like that will happen, what? Well, it would make. Because uh, right now I'm 17, so in two years I'll be 20. In two years I want to be in the UFC, which I do think I will be. And in the five year, in the five year stretch, I plan to uh, being a UFC champion, one of the youngest UFC champions, or if not one of the youngest UFC champion and um, yeah because obviously I want to be number one who doesn't want to be number one who doesn't want to be the greatest I do so um, like I said I'm, 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 I'm very focused for these goals and uh, I'm, not I'm not taking these goals very lightly I take these goals very seriously because I'm mentally I'm mentally there to be there and uh, I'm mentally and, and I'm mentally focused to uh, get there so that's where I see myself in two to five years. In two years, I'll be in the UFC. Within the five-year stretch, I'll be a champion by then, 100%.